Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome everyone to uh, the lecture of chapter 8 and uh, this will be about uh, trickling filters and bio towers so part 1 will be talking about trickling filters and uh, chapter 8 in general is uh, dealing with attached growth system in chapter 7 we have discussed the uh, suspended growth system which was uh, mainly the activate sludge system and we saw uh, uh, what are the modifications and the design parameters and uh, all of these things related to uh, suspending growth system but in chapter 8 we will deal with attached growth system which is the the uh, other type of biological treatment system so in part one we'll be talking about trickling filters so uh, in general the attached growth system this is to review those are system that contact wastewater with microbial growths attached to the surfaces of supporting media so we have a supporting media and the microbial growth or the bacteria will be attached to the surface of this uh, media and wastewater will be contacted with this uh, media and we have two main uh, systems or two main techniques uh, one technique is called the trickling filter and the other one is the bio tower okay so trickling filters those are a reactor in which randomly packed solid forms provide surface area for biofilm growth okay let's have a look uh, this is a, a diagram of the trickling filter we can see here that uh, it, con it consists of different parts. First, let me say that the wastewater feeding is from somewhere here, okay? And then it will be sprinkled through these uh, sprinkle arms, okay? And the wastewater will be sprinkled onto the top of a surface or this I mean on the top of a filter media this filter media can be made from stone can be made from uh, plastic ceramic or whatever okay and this uh, filter media is where the bio I mean where the uh, bacteria uh, grow and attach to and then the wastewater will be uh, contacted with this bacteria or biofilms and uh, it, it is able to oxidize the organic matter through this contact okay and the third component is of course the, the the draining system so the wastewater will be collected somewhere here and then go to the outlet and uh, disposed as an effluent okay so this is in general these are the uh, three major components the first component as we said is the filter medium and the filter medium is where it is provided the surface for the biological growth and also it provides the voids for the liquid to pass through okay so as you can uh, see in this picture uh, this is one of the uh, forms of the media this is a plastic uh, media and you can see through the cross section of this media how it is or how it uh, provides large surface area okay and you can assume or you can imagine that uh, wide areas is covered with this uh, with this material so it will provide a huge uh, surface area okay and uh, also other materials can be used like crushed stone slag plastic packing and so on and also um, when we choose the filter material it has to be low cost it has to, it has to be durable I mean not changing during time or uh, can sustain against uh, temperature against pH against uh, all the conditions of uh, wastewater and also it has to provide high surface to volume ratio okay which in which we don't use uh, a lot of material but the same time it provides us high surface area okay 
and also allow the light and air to flow in to make ventilation to the system okay so and the second one second component is the rotary distributor or the rotary arms or the sprinkling arms you can see in this picture how these arms sprinkle or uh, spread the wastewater on the top of the surface of the uh, of the trickling filter okay and these arms mainly uh, move around the center so this is uh, if we imagine that the center is here okay so they move around and they sprinkle the wastewater onto all the area of uh, the trickling filter okay so this is the second component uh, you can see here is another uh, uh, another photo uh, you can see how clear that uh, the surface area is I mean the, the top surface is 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 very wide okay this is another photo also you can see uh, from uh, for, from the top how the trickling filter look likes looks like and uh, here are the distributing arms you can see four arms are distributing and these will be circulating around the center okay the third component is the under drain system this will uh, carry and dispose the treated wastewater and also the sloughed biomass okay so uh, these are the three main components of the trickling filter basically okay and normally we operate and normally the trickling filters are operated in series okay so normally uh, it should be applied like two or sometimes three trickling filters in series okay in series not in parallel in series and this will I mean this will guarantee more effective contact time with the biofilm okay and normally it will be uh, followed by a secondary clarifier this will uh, remove the sloughed solids I mean all the wash out biomass and bacteria uh, biomass and solids uh, has to be separated before going to other treatment units or before going before discharged to the um, uh, um, to the river or or whatever okay different factors will affect the operation uh, mainly the organic loading which is the BOD okay the BOD how much BOD is for the wastewater is applied each I mean every day and the second factor mainly is the hydric fluorates the Q okay how many cubic meters is received for the wastewater plant and also the temperature of water and the ambient air so this will also affect the um, the uh, process of trickling filter and here are some disadvantages of the trickling filter and later on we will know uh, how could we overcome those disadvantages through the bio towers so first um, trickling filters they are not as efficient as newer treatment methods so it is considered one of the old treatment methods okay nowadays there are so many innovations and so many developments and improvements that uh, ha or that provide higher efficiency okay and they are large and require a wide area of land okay and the variation in effluent and quality this is because it cannot sustain fluctuations or cannot uh, uh, treat very well in the condition of fluctuations of BOD and fluctuations of wastewater uh, characteristics okay and in addition to the other problems that appear when using the trickling filters so you can see that the high organic loading rates means that there will be excessive biomass growth okay it is such as when you provide more food so there will be more bacteria growing so the more growth of bacteria and more biomass growth i mean this will make 
or this will cause plugging for the pores and then there will be no uh, efficient air ventilation so the odor will start to increase and the efficiency of wastewater treatment will be uh, decreasing okay and the second thing is that it is sensitive to temperature variations so that will make it unstable uh, that will make the effluent quality unstable and not constant I mean not stable through the time so maybe some days the effluent quality will be okay very good but maybe other days because of higher temperatures or because of lower temperatures okay so that will make changes to the uh, effluent quality which is not desirable that is the end of part one and uh, in part two we will talk about bio towers what are the differences between bio towers and trickling filters and the design calculations thank you Salaam alaikum.